last episode. Oh, we were still exploring Orange Blue Land. We saw some videotapes that give us more context of what happened with Azriel and the first human, while also fighting another amalgamate. We at least got the air conditioning working again, so the rooms are much clearer and not covered in any fog of any kind. Especially one particular room we couldn't explore at all. Because it was just too foggy. Let's take advantage of exploring that foggy room. Entry number 19. The families keep calling me to ask, ask when everyone is coming home. What am I supposed to say? I don't even answer the phone anymore. It's a refrigerator. It's empty. I don't know why there were so many- Alphys has so many fridges in here. Are these supposed to be what she was like keeping like samples and whatnot in? Like, I guess they don't have like proper like, I don't know, like, um, refrigeration units that like proper like labs would have, so I guess you would have to make new with fridges. Entry number 20. Asgore left me five messages today. Four about everyone being angry. One about a cute teacup that he found it looks like me. Thanks, Asgore. If you actually look at her desk in the lab, you can actually see that said cup. Undyne has one too. Um, back in her house before it catches on fire. Basically, Asgore has a habit of that if he finds a, um, a cup that looks like somebody that he knows, he gives them that cup. It's a refrigerator. It seems to contain samples. Oh, yeah, so I was right. So, yeah, this is where she's keeping the samples. I guess she doesn't have proper, like, like, uh, units that, like, you would have in, like, science, in, like, science labs. So she would make do with fridges as a substitute. Something is in this. It's a refrigerator. It's empty. Apparently it's empty. Number 21. I spent all my time at the garbage dump now. It's my element. The refrigerator, it seems to contain samples of some kind. It's a refrigerator. It's empty. No, it is not! It is an enemy! It's so cold. Now this amalgamate's theme is also different because it's actually a bit more sadder. This is an amalgamate that we actually somewhat know of. Because if you pay attention, you imagine there is one major detail you can identify from this monster. If you look closely, it is a it is a it is a chill drake. This is supposed to be the mother of of, of chill drake, and I believe it's implied that she is somewhat still self aware. She isn't fully gone. Attack minus 12 and defense minus 5. Seems like it's losing itself. You can even tell by the attack and defense that they're in the negatives. She does not want to fight us, really. I think she's... I think one of the few amalgamates that still somewhat is still holding on to... to her sanity. And holding on to her conscience, but she's on the verge of losing it. Sinoe. You can even see that the attack went away, so yeah, she has no desire to fight us. Joke. We told a bad pun about out snow. Her expression starts to shift. <laughs> I remember. Starts to change more. <laughs> Thank you. Mm. 
I found about Snow. She's completely calmed down. And you won. She's dropped the blue key. Yeah, that one is really sad because out of all the other amalgamates, the amalgamates at this point, with probably the exception of Comico, have all essentially forgotten who they are. She's the only amalgamate that you fight that seems to still hold on to some resemblance of who, of who she is. And she's on the verge of losing it. Can't make it out. Curtains. That's all you could read. Well, we found this one, so let's plug it in. And with that, I believe we also found the other keys. So let's go plug those in. Okay, yeah, I plugged that one in, so... The last key that we need to plug in is back in the flower room. With that, all four or power units should be uh, powered up. So the door back at the start of the lab should be open. up, we've opened it. Seems like another elevator has lost its power. Seems to be turned off. Looks like the main power unit. Let's turn it on. Seems like, it seems like I, this controls the power, the elevator's power. Turn it on. Yes. More amalgamates. Hey, stop! I got you guys some food, okay? Sorry about that. They get kind of sassy when they don't oh, get fed on time. I think they smelled the potato chips you had, and I'm actually curious of what she says here if you did not buy any of the potato chips on the vending machine. Anyway, the power went out, and I've been trying to turn it back on. But it seems like you were one step ahead of me. Where were you? By the way, Alphys, we went through the entirety of the True Lab. Are there areas that we, of the True Lab we couldn't access that you were in? Because seriously, where was she? She claimed she was trying to turn on the power, but we never ran into her once. So unless there's areas of the True Lab, like other floors and whatnot, that we didn't have access to... I'm curious where she was. This was probably uh, just a big inconvenience for you. But, but I appreciate that you came here to back me up. As I said, I was afraid I might not come back. But that's not because of these guys or anything. I was just worried I would be too afraid. To tell the truth, that I might run away or do something cowardly. This is a reference to her neutral endings. Um, in most neutral endings, um, she kills herself because the guilt that she's that she's going through of what she's done to these people and what they have become, 
she um, ultimately kills herself. This is this is most notable if in during any run you either killed Undyne or or Mediton. Oh, and then she is without without a hundred percent of a doubt does kill herself. I think the only time she doesn't kill herself if the, if any of those two died is if you abort a genocide run very late into the run. Um, I... I suppose I owe you an explanation. As you probably know, Askor asked me to study the nature of souls. During my research, I isolated it a power I called determination. I injected it into the dying monsters so their souls always would last after death. But the experiment failed. You see, unlike humans, monster bodies don't have enough physical matter to take a, a, these concentrations of determination. Their bodies started to melt and lost what of, of physicality they had. Pretty soon, all the test subjects had melted together into those. Seeing them like this, I knew. I couldn't tell their families about it. I couldn't tell anyone about it. No matter how much everyone was, a was asking me, I was too afraid to do any more work knowing everything I've done on so far has been such a horrific failure. But now, now I've changed my mind about all this. I'm going to tell everyone what I have done. It's going to be hard. Being honest, believing in myself. I'm sure there will be times where I will struggle. I'm sure there will be times where, I, where I'll screw up again. But knowing deep down that I have friends to fall back on, I know it will be a lot. It will be a lot easier to stand on my own. Thank you. Come, guys. It's time for everyone to go home. Well, looks like thanks to us, she's willing to open up to the truth, tell the entire underground of what she's done, on um. um and tell all the various monsters' families, like, like um, Saroba and whatnot, of what happened to their fa of their family members that were brought here, and also take them home. Curious how all these families are going to react seeing their loved ones, not only in this state but also be the amalgamation of other different monsters. Oh, but this is turned on, and it's a smiley face. Let's read it. Entry number eight. I've chosen a candidate. I haven't told Asgore yet because I wanted Aunt to surprise him with it. In the center of his garden, there is something special. The first golden flower that grew before all the others. The flower from the outside world. It appears ears just before the queen left. I wonder, what happens when something without a soul gains the will to live? So these flowers did not originate in the underground. We saw them in all of them in, in the ruins, in the garbage dump, and in Asgore's castle. These are flowers from um, the first human's village that as that Asriel went to, and subsequently died. It is implied that when Asriel returned, he had a bunch of seeds on him, on him, and they eventually started growing into the garden. Um. But she mentioned choosing a candidate and giving something that doesn't, that isn't living, the will to live. Entry number 18. The flower is gone. If you haven't pieced it together, she's talking about flowery. This is where flowery was born. She took the flower from Asgore's garden and gave it life. I. This is why I Flowery does not have a soul. He was created by Alphys, and unfortunately, Alf Alphys unleashed a psychopathic murderer <laughs> into the underground. 
So, yeah. We at least now know where Flowery came from. Who's calling us? It's a voice you haven't never heard before. Hello? Donnie, are you there? It's been a long time, hasn't it? But you have done well. Thanks to you, everything has fallen into place. Donnie, see you soon. Looks like we're back at the castle, and these vines cover the elevator. The door's jammed shut with vines. So this is all what I meant a few episodes ago, why it's a point of no return, earned, and why anything you get there, like from the memory heads, doesn't matter. Because these vines prevent you from leaving. So you are essentially locked into here. Or the game can make me a liar. Oh, no, wait. Yeah, this is just to get through the house. <laughs> but yeah, the elevator that would take you back to the em to the MTT, oh, more so back to the core, is locked, so you cannot go back. You are forced to go forward. Past the flower garden. And beyond here is where Asgore is waiting. In the next episode, we'll go face him. Once again, let's see what's changed because we helped Alphys. Perhaps we'll get a better outcome. If you enjoyed this episode, do like the videos, it helps tremendously. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a comment down below on your thoughts of this episode, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.